All right, guys, welcome back. Um, we're looking at a recessionary gap, which we've seen plenty of. So again, we have both these models, and they should look exactly the same at this point. Uh, remember, with the recessionary gap, what we're talking about is that we are operating output is actual. Sorry, actual output is less than potential output is what's happening here. That's why E1 is to the left of the LRAS curve on both of these, and then that difference between actual output and potential output. That is your recessionary gap, all right? So it's that difference. Um, now, this isn't good. As we understand that word recession, not good. It means that we have high unemployment, because remember, again, the LRAS curve is where we are in full employment, where there's no cyclical. If we're in a recession, that means we have higher unemployment. So there are two ways that the economy will get back on track, okay? And there are two very different ways. It's important that we understand each one of them very clearly. The first way is that it can self-correct. So that means if the government does nothing, what we're going to do on this model will be what will occur. Or the government can get involved and actively try to stabilize the economy. Um, we're going to split this into two videos so that neither one is overwhelming, and then you can compare both. So this video, we're going to focus on how the economy would self-correct. So the assumption is from this point forward on this model is that the government does nothing. They don't change anything about their policies. They simply allow the economy to naturally fix itself and it will naturally fix itself. So how is that going to happen? So how do we move from the short run to the long run? All right, well, we have to start off. There's going to be several steps and I would highly encourage you to take note of those steps because again, the point of this isn't to memorize the shift and how that happens. The point is for you to understand because what's going to happen is later in the year or later in the course, there are going to be other models and they're going to be built on what happens during these steps. So it is vital that you don't just know and memorize what shifts and gets us back to normal, but how that happens, okay? So step one, again, we're looking at where actual output, so again, we can just define them. This isn't step one, but in our recessionary gap, actual output is less than potential output, correct? That's where we are. So step one is that we have low output or falling output. All right. So when we have falling output, what's going to happen? What will be the effect of falling output on jobs? Well, we've already said this one too. When, and just think about it logically, if we are producing less things, then we do not need to hire as many workers because we're not being as productive. So if we don't hire as many workers, unemployment is going to increase. So one of the key things here is this negative relationship between output and unemployment. When output falls, unemployment rises. Now we discussed this in another video. This occurs in the short run. Okay? So these two things that we've done so far, falling output, unemployment rising, that's where we are at E1. So that is E1, falling output, rising unemployment. So how does the economy self-correct? So we did talk about this in a previous video. So hopefully you already know the key is going to be what happens to wages. Okay? Um, so if we have rising unemployment, what's going to happen to wages? Well, there is also a negative relationship between unemployment and wages. So if we just look at it, unemployment rises and wages are going to fall. However, that does not happen immediately. And the reason for that is because sticky wages. Because wages and prices are slow, in this case, to fall in the face of high unemployment. That's what sticky wages are. So in the short run, the way that we are able to operate at E1, and the reason the economy doesn't automatically self-correct and bring us back to the LRAS curve, is because wages are sticky in the short run. Once we move through that time and wages become flexible, that's the difference between the short run and the long run. If you recall again from that previous video, and if you don't, then I highly recommend you go back to the videos, the um, from the short to the long run videos, because that will help tremendously with this, I would hope. Um, so short run, wages are flat, are sticky. Um, they are slow to change. In the long run, they become flexible, which means that they adjust. So because we have high unemployment, wages are going to fall. Again, that video, I drew it on a supply and demand model to show exactly why that is, because the demand for labor is decreasing, so the wages fall. Now, when this occurs, we still haven't shown anything on our model. 
But now, if you think back to our negative and positive supply shocks, when we have falling wages, wages are a determinant not of aggregate demand. They are, however, a determinant of aggregate supply. So, when we have falling wages, the question you need to ask yourself is, falling wages, cheaper workers, does that cause companies to be able to supply more or to supply less? And again, thinking about logically or just remembering what that uh, video told us, that's going to cause suppliers, producers to be able to hire more workers to be more productive. So think about it. Because wages have fallen, it is now cheaper for them to buy a worker. So instead of having to pay $12 an hour per worker, they only have to pay $10 an hour per worker, which means if they have that same exact budget, their budget was $1,200, before they could only hire uh, 10 workers or 100 workers, depending on how many hours you want to do, now they can hire more. So that is going to cause the SRAS curve, the short run aggregate supply curve, to shift to the right. And now here's the key thing, and we're going to get to prove this a little bit later on in the course. But for right now, we're going to draw this going through our long run aggregate supply curve. So we have SRAS 1 and 2. We have a rightward shift. And now the point is that we are back on our long run equilibrium. Okay, so I'm juggling a bunch of markers here, but we see that E2, we are back to long run. We have a falling price level from E1 to E2, and we had increasing output from Y1 to YP. And there's no need to relabel YP. YP is potential output. So don't label it Y2, there's no need for that. We are back at potential output. And so this is how the economy self-corrected from its recessionary gap. So these are your four key steps. We had falling output, which led to rising unemployment. Rising unemployment in the short run, wages didn't change, but in the long run, once they stop being sticky and become flexible, those wages are gonna fall. When the wages fall, suppliers, producers are able to hire more workers which will increase short-run aggregate supply, bringing us back to our long-run equilibrium. Okay? Stay tuned. The next video will be about active stabilization policies, so if the government gets involved. Till next time, this has been a La Money Production.